In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to implement an unattended UiPath robot in an automated and cost-efficient way. I'll start out by showing you a sample UiPath automation. So this is a bot that I developed to perform a particular task, and this bot will be what we end up moving to the cloud. Then I'll move over to AWS to spin up a new EC2 instance. We'll install the UiPath robot software onto that machine, which will allow it to run the process. We'll then connect this robot to our UiPath orchestrator platform, which we can use to trigger the process to run remotely. Once that's all set up, we'll configure everything to run on an automated schedule. So for AWS, that means having the EC2 instance be started and stopped on a schedule, and for the RPA side, orchestrator will trigger the process to run during the same time window that the EC2 instance is up and running. Then after a few days, we'll come back and check out the results we have from the automated project. So why is this useful and who's it for? Well, for enterprises looking to make a move towards unattended RPA, this can be a proof of concept for them to build out and test how it works in their environment and for their specific use cases. Now, keep in mind, this video is just going to show very basic architecture with very few security measures built in. So it could be a starting point to build a solution off of, but of course a lot of changes will have to be made for this to be appropriate in an enterprise environment. Now for small businesses or even individuals looking for an unintended RPA solution, this could be almost plug and play with again, some security measures that should be added, but for most use cases, it should be pretty much ready to go. So what's the solution gonna look like? Well, it starts in AWS where a CloudWatch scheduled event will trigger a Lambda function which starts the EC2 instance. So you can have this set up to run Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 a.m. And this will be the time window that the EC2 instance is running and ready for your process to be run. Then on the other side, UiPath Orchestrator will have a schedule set up to trigger the desired process or processes to be run, which will be aligned with the window that the EC2 instance is up and running. So you can set up one process or multiple. For instance, if you want five processes run, just set up all five to be run at the same time, and Orchestrator is going to queue those jobs to be run on the EC2 instance one after the other. And then the whole time that the EC2 instance is up and running, it's being monitored by a CloudWatch inactivity alarm, and this is going to trigger the instance to be stopped after a certain period of inactivity to avoid unnecessary charges, because in AWS, you're charged for every hour that the EC2 instance is running. So we don't want this to be running any longer than it needs to be. So why is this particular solution beneficial? Well, to start, unattended solutions, meaning the process is running remotely without human intervention, is useful because you can have your process run without taking up your computer's resources where you have to click start and wait for everything to finish running. All that will be done on the cloud in its own environment. Then by automating everything end to end, meaning starting and stopping the EC2 instance and having orchestrator run the process on a schedule, you can be completely hands off with this. You can configure everything and basically forget about it. You could be sitting on the beach and have it set up so that when the process runs, you get sent an email with the results right there. And this is all while avoiding the cost of having the EC2 instance running 24-7, which will start to make your costs add up. So here's the sample process that we'll be putting in the cloud. So for this example, pretend you're an investor that buys properties to flip and sell or rent or whatever. So on a regular basis, you check auction.com for upcoming and current property auctions and you set up your search, you look through each listing, and you try to find properties based on the criteria that you're interested in. But auction.com doesn't have all the data that you're interested in. You also check out Zillow to see the property's estimate price to help your decision of what would be a good deal. So let's say rather than manually doing all these steps on a regular basis, you create a UiPath automation to do all these steps for you. So I'm going to start a demo of this. I'll open up UiPath Studio here and click Run. And a browser is launched to auction.com. It's going to input the desired zip code. Now the bot's going to filter for what we're looking for, so single family and bank owned. So the bot will start looping through each of the 14 properties and pulling the relevant information off of each page. And then one part that you don't see is that for each property, the bot is querying the Zillow API to get that Zestimate data as well. Okay. 
Okay, so the bot finished running. Let's check out the results. It creates an Excel file and stores all the data from these 14 matching properties. So you got the address and just various information we were able to pull from auction.com, plus the Zestimate data that we got from the Zillow API. So after all of the infrastructure is set up and configured in Orchestrator and AWS, such that the jobs are running fully automatically on a schedule without any human intervention, we'll have results like this. So let's check out the last week of results. So that's three jobs, and you'll see that all of them were successful. And we can take a look at the logs of any of these runs. So if we click over here and view logs, then we can see some of the details that I'm having the bot capture right now in the log. So it is grabbing the property that it's on and showing some of the steps it's working on and uh, pushing these logs in real time as it completes each step. So now let's look over in our email account that is receiving these emails and you'll see a whole bunch of them here in the inbox. And you see the message about the bank owned single family homes that were found for the zip code that we're looking for. And we'll see the attached CSV file with all of our data that we captured. We can go over, this one looks the same three days ago, six days ago, they each have a CSV file dated for uh, that period. So this can be used to analyze data in real time as this information gets emailed to us, or we can aggregate all the files over time to kind of see different trends and, and things like that. That concludes this demonstration. Thanks for watching.